Hello there guys, it's Steven here back with another video. How are you all doing? It's been a few days since the Wigan game. I try not to think or talk about that. I tell you, it's been awkward at work this week. So many people asking, how did that game go on Monday? I'm like, oh, just... Anyway, moving very, very swiftly on. That game is now a distant memory. Well, not so distant memory, but I'm trying to uh, pretend it is. Uh, and we've got a cup final to look forward to this weekend. But before that, I've had a request for a video. If you don't know, I've got a tier on my Patreon, which is basically $40, which sounds like a lot of money per month, which it is. It means you get the very special honour of choosing a subject for me to discuss in a video. It's only available for five people, and it's once a month. And this one comes from Dennis Duffy, who's the first person to ever uh, get involved in this way and offer $40 a month. Dennis, you're an absolute hero. Thank you so, so much. You pay for my coach to Wembley, genuinely, which is just brilliant. And there'll be a vlog from Wembley as well, so don't worry about that. I am going on Sunday, uh, and there'll be a video up on Monday evening, hopefully. But Dennis, thank you very much for uh, getting involved. Thank you for being the first person to reach that higher tier. Thank you for uh, choosing this subject. The subject, as you see from the title of the video, is Brahim Diaz and Phil Foden. Will one of them ever be a first team player? If you want to get involved and maybe choose some subjects, it's a hell of a commitment, but if you want to and you think, I'd love to be able to choose a video every month for Stephen to discuss, patreon.com forward slash esteem company. As ever, if you don't, you just want to keep watching these videos, well, they're not going anywhere, so you carry on doing that, and I'll carry on making videos too. There will obviously be a preview and all that kind of stuff before the game, but this one is just a nice midweek uh, talking point. Uh, I'm going to dive into this initially by saying I don't fully know, but what I'm going to do is offer some opinion, look at some facts, and maybe discuss some talking points. I'm going to start individually uh, on Brahim Diaz. I'm going to look at both of their seasons, actually. Brahim and Foden. I'm going to say how many minutes they played so far this season, what my expectations are, and how far they'll go. And if you look at the stats so far, uh, Brahim Diaz, so far he's made six appearances this season, around 150 minutes, which is obviously only about just less than two games of football. Phil Foden, He's made five appearances and around 207 minutes of football, uh, which is, doesn't sound a lot on paper. It's not bad. It isn't brilliant. It isn't awful either. Uh, you got to consider the fact that there's a bit of an age difference between them. Brahim Diaz turns 19 in August, so by the time next season starts, he'll be 19 years old, uh, which is a little bit older than Phil. Phil will be only 18 in May. Uh, by the time the season's finished, May the 28th, I think his birthday is, he'll only have turned 18, so he's so, so young. It's definitely worth bearing that in mind. So he's got a little bit more time than Brahim has, and he probably feel a little bit more comfortable. In general, I think these two have been the ones that we go to this season when we need a young player. And I think they've earned that right as well. I'm sure Jaden Sancho would have been there alongside them. But I don't think either of them will be overly disappointed. I don't think they'll be a... I don't think Brahim will be thrilled as such. I think he'll be pleased. I think Foden will be thrilled. I think he'll be delighted given it's his boyhood club, given the fact that he's only so young. Brahim's a year older, uh, but he's not had a bad season either. With Brahim, it's an interesting one. I, I'm kind of torn in two minds how far he'll go in Manchester City. I think he's got all the ability in the world. I think he's a special player. He's obviously been nominated as well as one of the most brightest young talents in world football on various lists recently. He's been picking up personal accolades in that form. Um, he's a special player. It's just we're so top-heavy in four attacking environments he wants to be a number kind of number 10 and that's where his ideal position is but obviously given his skill set given his pace and his work rate and the fact that he can beat people he tends to be pushed out wide which is probably not his best position but he is effective there it's just hard for him to get a game in the middle probably because of his size he isn't the biggest person in the world uh, and that therefore means he's played out wide now if you look at the squad at the moment we've got Bernardo Silva will play out wide you've got Liva Sane you've got Ryan Sterling uh, obviously even uh, Gabriel Jesus would play there as well maybe even Aguero would play out wide before Brahim if he push came to shove there. Now it's obviously very tough for him and given the fact that in the summer we are probably going back in for uh, maybe uh, another forward. The rumours were after Mares obviously in January then maybe we were after Sanchez at one point. Well I say maybe we definitely were and we could be after who knows maybe a Leon Bailey or Mares or someone else in the summer. It becomes very hard for him to get on the bench never mind first team football. Never mind even starts in the League Cup. You might get him, it might be, it just becomes a little bit harder. Those positions are so very hard to get into in this team because the talent that we have there is especially exciting and it's also a little bit younger. Now, I can see, I'm really on the fence of Brahim. I think he's got the ability, definitely. I think he's raw and rough, but he is only 18 years old as it stands. He's expected to be raw. He's expected to be uh, maybe a little bit underwhelming sometimes, sometimes incredibly exciting. His cameos in general have been a little bit mixed. Uh, in some games, he was exceptionally exciting. Uh, and then against Burnley, he underwhelmed a little bit. He's been up and down, you know, and I suspect that, that and I suspect that's kind of normal for him. Against Shakhtar, I remember as well, he came on, had a lovely little cameo. He's a very, 
very skillful player. He's also one blessed with absolutely loads of heart. And he's got the determination, the work rate, and the likability factor. And that is a thing for Guardiola. He's talked recently to Presta about how much he rates Bernardo Silva's attitude. And Zinchenko as well, how they're always there smiling. Brahim is a very friendly, very happy young man. He's a very likable player. And I'm sure he fits into the squad character perfectly. But that's not enough. Now, he has the ability, definitely. It just depends on whether he'll get enough game time next season. I'm hoping that if we wrap up the Premier League a little bit early, we'll see Brahim uh, get a few games and get a few stars, potentially, because why not? If we've got a big Champions League game coming up, ideally, uh, you want to rest a few players. And Brahim could be the kind of guy, if we've already won the league, to start... I don't know, against some lower mid-table club. I don't think I don't think Pep personally will sacrifice the league entirely once he's won it. I think he'll keep the players fresh, keep them sharp mentally. He's that kind of person who demands perfection. But I do think he'll see some kind of interchanging of players, and probably rightfully so. It's just a tough one for Raheem. A small part of me expects that he might go on loan next season. And it's really hard to come back from a loan. In general, history doesn't tend to favour players who go out on loan. The world-class prospects tend to stay with the club. There are exceptions, of course. People say, look at Harry Kane. Uh, Beckham went on loan when he was younger and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there are exceptions. There are exceptions in every walk of life. But in general, most world-class players who come from academy tend to hang around and get there. Obviously, times have changed, though. And I'm aware that clubs these days, they have a bigger squad. Uh, they need a bigger squad because the games, because the amount of games they play and the high intensity that they play them at. So football, stats and referencing them is difficult for many reasons because the era's changed. Within five years, expectations can change. I think, Brahim, I'd like to see him get more and hopefully he will do. My honest opinion is, will he make it in Manchester City? Depends what you say, make it. Will he be... A first team regular at one point, I say it's 50-50. That is my honest opinion there. I think it's going to be very difficult for him. The next year and a half is going to be uh, critical. It's going to tell us a lot about his future. For now, I'm not certain. He definitely could do, but he might also go on loan for two or three years and eventually eventually do a Ronnie Lopez where he goes to Monaco and eventually becomes their star player by the age of 21. That's what, that's what Lopez is doing now and it's great to see. I can see maybe Brain doing that. Maybe not. He might go to uh, loan to like, Girona or something like that or NEC Braid and be the best player uh, over in the Eredivisie and people rave about him and he comes back as a 20-year-old uh, absolutely ready for first-team football as an impact sub or something like that, getting 25 games a season, the season after next for City's first team. Or maybe not. Anyway, that's a very on-the-fence kind of answer, but that's all I can offer on Brahim's situation. Foden one's different, in my personal opinion. Now, I think Pep loves Foden. Um, this has been backed up since pre-season, in my personal opinion. Pep was very, very, very complimentary about Phil Foden uh, after that friendly against Manchester United in pre-season. He said that we'd witnessed something special, that we witnessed the birth of something potentially magnificent. And I think in general, the fact that uh, Foden is only 17 years old, he's playing for by far the best team in the Premier League. And in general, playing relatively regularly. I wouldn't say overly regularly, but he's involved in the squad. He's got 207 minutes, made five appearances, two starts. It could have been more than that uh, if he hadn't had that unfortunate uh, run of injuries or had that unfortunate knock against Leicester. In my opinion, he would have started a couple of games during that time, given the calibre of the position we were playing. So he would have been looking at 207 minutes, maybe being 360 or 380 potentially. Uh, but it didn't happen, obviously. It's what ifs and maybes, you know, there's caveats for everything. But I still think the fact that he's 17, he made his debut at 17 years and four months old, that's very young. Especially for given how good we are as a team. And given the fact that Pep is always picking him up, given the fact that Pep always has him with the first team, despite his obvious physical limitations, it's clear to see that he's not ready physically for first team football yet. But it's obvious that he's ready mentally. It's obviously that he's ready uh, ability wise. He has all that. And the fact that even though he's obviously not ready in the in the most critical of senses, and the fact that Pep still has him in the first team, it says it all in my opinion how much Pep values Foden. This is an interesting slight aside. I'm not trying to compare him to Messi. Do not take this at uh, face value. I'm not saying he's anywhere near the level of Messi. I'm not saying he'll reach that. But it's interesting to mention uh, that even though Messi did have C team and B team football, which is professional over in Spain, he didn't actually make his debut until he was 17 years and three months old. And that season, he only played about, uh, was it? Let me check the stats. He played nine matches, making 77 minutes. He made his debut on October the 16th and went on to play just 77 minutes that season. And we're talking here about the great greatest player of all time in my personal opinion. Messi is a genius. The word genius is thrown around a lot, but Messi is a genius. And he, when he was 17, only played 99 minutes, sorry, 77 minutes for Barcelona in his debut season. Obviously, he had that kind of weighed against beating football, which is hugely competitive and hugely valuable for a young lad. Uh, uh, but still, 
even then, he was more prepared, arguably, than Foden was. And he, Foden's already had more minutes this season than Messi did in his first season. Now, I'm not saying that's a, um, a sign that Foden will go on to be better. Of course, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that he's getting just as many minutes as the best player ever has got at the same age. He's very young, is what I'm saying. And he's still getting involved in this team. Now, all signs point to, say, him having around... 300, 400 minutes this season, which is not bad at all for a 17-year-old. And next season, maybe you want to see him getting up to, you know, maybe... 10 to maybe 10 to 15 starts and maybe another 10 to substitute appearances maybe around 20 appearances altogether and he'll still only be 18 then the season after that he'll be starting the season at 19 still a teenager and maybe by then David Silva okay I'm saying this maybe he'll be on his way oh, that's a horrible thing to think about but maybe Phil Foden will be ready at that point having played 40 professional games to step into his shoes as a more regular first team member time is very much on Phil Foden's side I can't see Foden going alone next season I can see him being left around the squad because because he's got youth uh, uh, on his side and the fact that he's a local lad the story is just too perfect um the signs are very encouraging for Foden I'm almost certain he will go on to be a first team player at Manchester City that's just my opinion Brahim is on the fence somewhere Foden I think he will be. There's a lot of long, long way to go until that moment happens, but that is just my personal opinion. Anyway, guys, what did you make of that? Let me know in the comments. Is Foden going to make it in the first team? Is Brahim? Who will be playing next season? Who will be here next season? Will they go out on loan? There's loads of things to discuss. I want to say thank you once again to Dennis for suggesting this topic. I know it's a big commitment. I always do read all the comments. I'm always trying to take ideas directly from the comments anyway. But this one's especially for Dennis, given that he's he's put a massive kind of commitment behind this there with the patrons. So thank you very much, Dennis. And guys, thank you as ever for supporting this channel. Absolutely loads. And uh, there'll be a video tomorrow, hopefully a bit of a preview ahead of the Arsenal game. And I will um, see you next time. Hello there guys, it's Steven. Thanks for watching another esteemed company video as ever. I want to say a very, very big thank you to everyone who's been involved recently, everyone who's been watching the videos, everyone who's been in the comments section offering support, offering ideas, getting involved in the community that we've got on this channel. Though I don't always get time to reply to all the comments, I am reading them, so thank you very much. Anyway guys, go and enjoy the rest of your evening. There's loads of other videos here on this kind of title screen that you're seeing right now. Go and watch one of them, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully this weekend should be a fun one.